The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Wrestling to the Max Smackdown Review. Hello and welcome to Wrestling to the Max WWE Smackdown Live review for June 27th, 2017. And joining me here as usual, Mr. Paul Leeser. hey And, well, this was a height up as a pretty big Smackdown with lots of rematches. And I'd say it's delivers in some respects and in some respects probably uh it doesn't for for some people uh of course uh WWE caused controversy with the ending <laughs> perhaps for a whole nother reason but uh we'll get to that so of course this was the big we're gonna redo the money in the bank women's ladder match because of all the problems from the the first one, and we start out with Daniel Bryan and Carmella, and James Ellsworth and Carmella cuts the same promo pretty much as she did uh, when she had the Money in the Bank. The the first, you know, the the SmackDown after Money in the Bank, mm-hmm. which doesn't mean that it's, you know, it doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to it or whatever. Um, just it, it was it's good uh, you also get the uh stuff with Ellsworth getting removed by security which was funny right uh i mean and just because she's repeating stuff like the the points she's making are valid right and right. daniel bryan even goes so far as to admit that so i didn't have a problem with her restating that uh do you feel Maybe I'll ask this later, but like she got a lot more heat than she has in her entire run uh, right. so far on the main roster here. And I think I want to say that to that end, the finish at the pay-per-view worked. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point here is you're trying to establish that Carmella can actually do something for the company, for the brand. There's no point of having somebody on your roster that's just, yeah, I mean, you always need jobbers, but there's no point mm-hmm. of having a woman that has talent, or a man for that matter, and just have them just sitting around. They did something to try to do something with her, and you have to give them credit for that, because there are many times where we go, where's this guy been? Where's mm-hmm. this woman been? You know, we see it on Raw with as much as the Miz Taraj is a stupid name, they're doing something with Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Right. Now they're they're doing stuff with uh, Carmella. And, yeah, they gave James Ellsworth a two-year deal, but he's he's making it work with mm-hmm. this, uh, this whole thing with her. So pretty much, you know, this is kind of just – this is continuing the narrative that we've seen. Uh, for this this whole money in the bank with Carmella feeling like you know her was taken away from her unrightfully, and uh, we I would go straight to the money in the bank match, but this is so short that we can just stick it in here. The SmackDown Women's Title match was also a rematch on this show. Naomi and Lana, Lana sneak attacks. Naomi during her she's about to finish her introduction. And then she gets that awesome, like, hammerlock spine buster that she does. And then Naomi pretty much just <laughs> beats her in, like, 30 seconds with the uh, kick and split-legged moonsault. And, boy, Naomi looks super strong. And, honestly, Lana is not on her level and shouldn't be seen on her level. That is true. 
Uh, I just, I kind of wonder, I, it's not like this is the be-all, end-all for Lana, right? I mean, it's only right. your second match. You have a lot to do with her still, and especially if you can build up another, a good face uh, to oppose Lana now. I think you might be in for something pretty fun down the road. But for sure, I think Naomi needed this a lot. Like, we hear Gary often on this show talk about how much he's not a big fan of Naomi's title run and all that. And it's kind of hard to disagree um, with the fact right now, as it stands, that, you know, she certainly does look like she's on top of the division and riding high. Well, especially because the whole point was that Lana felt like Carmella's distraction was the reason why she should get in her title match, that she mm-hmm. would have beat her regardless. Well, Naomi just says, well, yeah. no. Just <laughs> just no. <laughs> like, yeah. if you I thought about it. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you even thought that you had a shot, you do not. So, I, you know, it is, it's interesting because it was, they gave Lana a lot in that first match with mm-hmm. the, with the work in the limb and all that. And then sort of just saying, well, forget that we tried to make it look like Lana could wrestle in the first match. Well, we're just absolutely destroying her here. I, she could obviously bounce back. The crowd is still going to love her regardless. I I just, I hope it's not like, well, that was the experiment of her in the women's division. She's going to go back to doing what she used to do with Rusev or just kind of not being around much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the pay-per-view, she certainly exceeded my expectations as far as what she could do. And, and all that, and I think they put together a, a good match, honestly, because I was expecting something not so good, and we actually got something pretty decent. Uh, and and here, I think she sells all Naomi stuff real well. Granted, it's only two moves, but she sold that head kick really well. I think she can. I think she could make a go of it. I really do. So hopefully, you're right, and they keep her around. I hope so too. You know, especially with uh, the rumors going around that a certain all red everything is not done. Mm. You know. Even though she disputes that they didn't give her her gimmick, but we'll see. Could they both be on the same roster? I mean, they don't even want two couples on different rosters. So, I mean, Lana's already wrestled two more matches than Eva Marie has, so but <laughs> can't say that they gave her her gimmick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wonder if, like, especially that you have Lana wrestling, would people even go for that gimmick with Eva Marie? Like, just... I I think once you kind of put it out of the bag, like, I don't think she could come back with that now. Mm -hmm. Uh, You might be able to just because you could still keep up with what you were doing before until you can either figure out, A, what you want to do with her, or B, if you even want to keep going forward with that. True. Uh, That's all. You'd have to see how the crowd responds and everything, Mm -hmm. too, which I'm sure they'll still do. But Oh, for sure. You know, you might get those the crazy reaction of, oh, wow, she's been gone. Let's cheer for some weird reason. But uh, let's get to the match that I think everybody was waiting for, this Money in the Bank women's ladder match. Carmella, Becky, Charlotte, Tamina, and Natalia all in this again. Uh, I like that they did the spot with Carmella tries to get up on the ladder, and then everybody basically gets on the ring at the same time and knocks her off. I was waiting for that in the first match, honestly. <laughs> so glad they did that here. Uh, I, I was surprised by how much they didn't use the ladder. Like when Becky was doing those exploders, I was kind of like, well, you're missing an opportunity to use the ladder there. You're missing opportunity for Tamina to basically safely put somebody's back onto the ladder with a Samoan drop. <laughs> uh, you know, like, they're, they're, they could have probably used more of it. Um, I, You know, it probably didn't help that Becky having trouble, like, moving the ladder around wasn't uh, good for future women's ladder matches in general. But I thought for the most part this was good just because... They got a lot more time than they did in the 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 pay per view match. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the most of the women got moments. Yeah, you know, I thought Natalia's like Liger bomb was 
really cool. Uh, the then having the brawl outside with Charlotte too, and you know uh, Tamina is a bad wrestler on the weekend. <laughs> really dispute that at this point. You know Charlotte had her moments, but. How did you feel about the Ellsworth coming back only for him not to be the reason, you know, Carmella, when she goes and gets the chair, hits uh, Becky, who was really the only one hyped before this match because, you know, her and Ellsworth have been going back and forth forever on Mm -hmm. Twitter. And Carmella still wins this time by herself. Uh, I like this finish a lot more personally. One, because it actually played into everything that uh, Ellsworth had done to Becky. Uh, and secondly, because Carmella, I think, comes out of this looking infinitely better. Because now it's not, I had somebody give this to me. It's, yeah, I had a little bit of help. But in the end, I went the extra mile, used the steel chair, and took Becky out and, and just climbed up and took it. You know, and that's... If this was what they did at the pay-per-view, this would have been a lot better, if you ask oh, yeah. me, uh, for sure. And I I really like this one a little bit better than the one at the pay-per-view, too, just because I think everybody got a much more defined period of time to really go out there and sort of display what makes them great. Um, and for Tamina, that may only be throwing super kicks, but at least it's something. I, and everybody else still got their great moments, too. Charlotte climbing the ladder was really cool. Uh, as you mentioned, Natty's good spot already too. So, um, you know, I think it just all worked really well together. It tied in everything, and uh, you know, congratulations to Carmelo, of course. Yeah, she now becomes a two-time Miss Women's uh, Money in the Bank, I guess. Or, or that's, that's what she said on time. Talking Smack. So you know, it's this is this is going to be fun. How they do this? How quickly do they have her? go on and and try to mess with Naomi as far as cashing in on her and stuff like that. I I really like the way she handled herself on Talking Smack as well. Um, just, you know, really trying to get that apology out of Brian, even though, you know, he's not going to give it, but still, mm-hmm. still trying to state her case. She didn't do wrong the first time. Uh, but I, I think overall, it, what, what would you say to the people that go, well, now they just made the same mistake twice. Didn't they have to do this finish? Because then if you don't have Carmella win, she just comes off as a whiny person and and you miss all the build that you're trying to do with her. Right. And for sure, I think... If, what they did, if this was the plan the entire long, then good on WWE, right? Because... To as we already talked about a little bit, um, the the first finish I think worked. He got on Ellsworth, Heath got on Carmella, and they took a lot of backlash for it. But in the end, they kind of come out of this looking smarter than usual because now Carmella not only has earned it once, she's earned it twice, and uh, well, earned it once and then given it once, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, <laughs> I th- I think she she has a lot of um. She feels important now. That's something I don't think she could say that's ever been true. Um, maybe throughout her entire career, even in NXT. So, um, I, I, maybe not a star-making performance, but certainly like maybe a coming-out party for sure. Yeah, it's all about how you go on from here, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you've done a good job of getting to this point, of getting her to the point where. Now she matters. Now he will care when she comes out. I don't know that it's everybody yet, but you're paying attention to her when you're when her segment is on now because she mm-hmm. has the money in the bank and because of the way that happened. Social media is going to be paying attention. What is she going to be doing? How is she going to be messing with Naomi? You know, they they asked her the question of well, what do you do? Naomi beat Lon in about a minute. Well, she has the trump card of, well, I can cash in whenever I want to, and I don't have to be involved in the match. So, right. you know, that's uh, that's how you do these. with with, And that's why heels most of the time are the ones with the money in the bank, because they can do these cash-ins, and it's okay for them to just do them in, in the middle of other matches or after a match is over. Faces, it's kind of weird unless you're Dean Ambrose. So, you know... It's 
that's I mean people complain oh I wanted Nakamura to win I wanted uh, you know Becky to Becky should have won after all this stuff and I think you can make the gripe for Becky but where do you, like do you feel like this does anything for for any of the other women that lost I mean I, I don't think uh, you know Larry in his review makes this mention that I, it's not the first time I've heard it of do you have Becky uh, not be so peppy Becky anymore, or she's mm-hmm. much more uh, angry at the world after all this happened. I've seen a lot of people calling for a heel turn forward too, and I don't because if you turn her heel, you have to turn somebody else face because it's not just going to be Naomi and and I, I if you can call Charlotte a face at this point, yeah. uh, carrying that side of the division, right? So uh, whether you turn Natalia or Tamina for whatever reason, or if you have to bring somebody up. I mean, uh, if you want to keep Lana and Rusev separate, you, Lana's there. Lana is there. Um, yeah. and, I, and I guess, you know, with the reaction she's been getting, she could probably turn face pretty easily, even though she just got here. But uh, I, I just, you know, Becky Becky will get her time, and especially with all of this, and, and I'm sure Carmella is going to be the one that ends up lifting the championship off Naomi. Um so you have you still have a lot of stuff ready in with Becky because she's the one that's been close both times in the Money in the Bank and Carmella has literally stepped on or beat on to to get the briefcase and, and to win the championship. So you have an easy feud ready to go afterwards. And then I, I think the bigger question is how do you keep Charlotte um, involved in all this and just how complicated all this is going to get because you know WWE just can't let Charlotte sit there and not do anything. Yeah, and that's if you don't turn Becky, perhaps you know you have a Charlotte and Becky feud mm-hmm. while Carmella's you know messing with Naomi or or whatever because. I mean, I, they they also sort of hint. It's just like we've seen Charlotte and, and Natalia a bunch. I don't know that we need to see that again, uh, other than having you know one match or whatever if they want to, based off of what we saw in Money in the Bank. That's fine, but I, I just don't think that they need a feud again. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure this puts like you know Tamina back in the box that she came from, but I just. Uh, I feel like that's the only road they have. Whether you have Becky go dark and Charlotte stays how she is, or you have them both be faces going against each other, that's that works too because they have so much history with each other. Either way, you could do it. And it's still different than the way they were sort of building the Sasha and, and Bailey situation over there on Raw. So they have options just... I feel like that's the only one they can really go to that we haven't seen at length. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and that that would be fine with me, right? I just, I like Becky as a face, personally. She's a great heel, for sure. I've seen her work heel and shimmer before, um, and that's kind of how she made her name. So uh, all of that is still there and well within her ability to perform with. So I, I, I don't have a problem with it. I just, I really enjoy Becky as the Spitfire face, personally. I agree, yeah, she does that role really well. Uh plus it, it matches with the, the steampunk thing and the music and all that stuff, so it it's on them. I'm sure her merchandise sells pretty decently too, so it they have to make that choice. Uh you mm-hmm. know, they already did that with, with Enzo and Cass on Raw of man, their merchandise is selling hotcakes, but they wanted to pull that that turn. If they wanna do it it's on them at this point. One of the other matches that was hyped up for this, that's a feud that's been going on for a while, uh, Baron Corbin and Sami Zayn, and you have, before this, the appearance, the first TV appearance of Maria and Mike Kanellis, as Mike gets to state that, which he didn't do at the pay-per-view, if I remember right. Uh, state that that is her, his, her, his wife, uh, so that that's clear and out there. Even though uh, you know most people that that know 
you know where they come from, what what they are, or whatever. She's basically just doing the the ROH and TNA gimmick at this point. But you know, it, 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 is this going to be the thing with her? Is this, they're just going to get interrupted every time, or do you think this is setting up a Sami Zayn and uh, Mike feud? Uh, it absolutely is, right? I mean, him and Baron can only wrestle each other so many more times before it gets to that level of people just being like, ugh, again. So, uh, and, and you know with Baron Toten, that briefcase, he's going to be moving on to something uh, larger in the grand scheme of things when it comes to that World Heavyweight Championship over here on SmackDown. So, uh, for sure, Sammy and Mike are probably going to be hooking up soon. Uh, as far as ring work and all that goes, not in the other way. Because obviously, as you correctly said, that Mike and Maria are married. Uh, and uh, he did not mention that on the pay-per-view. So, you know, it's out there now more than just JBL being snide and saying he took her last name. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of... This hasn't grabbed me yet. You know, I mean, it's only been, if you can call this a, seg- a segment and a half of them, but... I, I don't know how interested I am in their in their run is going to be, especially because you know Mike is he is what he is in the ring, and clearly, just based off the name, this is all on Maria. So I wonder how much you're really going to get out of this without her ever wrestling, because we, we know how bad that goes. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're she could wrestle decently. Uh, you know, we saw it a little bit in our race. We saw it towards the end of her run in WWE. Uh, you know, she can get through a match, so I don't see why. If you're having Lana go out there and wrestle, then then why couldn't uh, Maria do it? I don't think you need to have her in the women's division having matches every week. Uh, she could... It, I, I think you can make it about Maria and still have it be about Mike's matches, you know. Uh, very much like it was for all the other gimmicks. It's just, oh, he has her last name. or So if there's nobody... I think it was more about they didn't want to have to deal with, well, how do we introduce the... There could be a lot of people that know who Maria is, but there could be a people who don't know who she is. And if you say she's Maria Canellas, Mike Canellas. You can go look up Maria and find all her old WWE stuff. You introduce her as Maria Canellas Bennett, and that's Mike Bennett. I think it it does create some kind of disconnect with people. Mm-hmm. So you could still make it the same gimmick that she's always done, where she's really just enhancing Mike. But it's more about her than it than it usually is, I guess. You know, she's the one that does a lot of the talking. While Mike is the one that does the wrestling, uh, I don't know if WWE has it in them to make that work. Because uh, we've seen them try this before with with other people, where the woman is very much in the forefront, um, and you know you have to have somebody else come in and try to get the heat. Uh, so I I, I don't know. Uh, like, like I'm just not. I'm not confident in Maria's ability to, to wrestle. I, at this point, I would say Lana is a better wrestler, and she has way less experience. So we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. But I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, I guess, is the way to put this. Like, I want this to work. I like both of them. I just, they're, they're, they're good at this part. They're not so good at the, you know, the stake part. Well, I mean, Mike is decent enough. He is fine. For what he, I mean, he he's really just a WWE guy mm-hmm. at the like the most basic level, I guess. Uh, so it so he like fits into that mold really well. I just I, I just really want to see like if they decide to put Lana back together with Rusev, I feel like a Rusev and Mike feud is like golden at this point. Just just from Maria and Lana. The barbs they're gonna throw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean we we're seeing them break up Miz and Mar- or seemingly maybe breaking up right. Miz and Maurice because of what they have going on over here with Mike and Maria. So I don't know if they would jump into that with Lana and Rusev. I I, I just don't know at this point. 
Yeah, it's weird, mm -hmm. right? We'd have to uh, we'd have to see what's going on there because like it do, it seems like they're doing it, but then she shows up with him and shows up they're fine and I don't know. It's right. It's see, I think they're waffling on their own thought because it's like how can you not sit? How can you sit there and go that Maurice doesn't make Miz better, and now you're going to take that away from him? That's just weird. Mm -hmm. And then what's she going to do? Go in the women's division again? And yeah, that's. And then what? Like, there's a total disconnect there when they go back to Total Divas, and they're okay. You know, it's just mm -hmm. this is really yeah. It, it lots of issues there. Yeah, yeah, I, and it's not like, you know, it wouldn't be the first time WWE's ever backpedaled on something that, you know, looked like a good idea, and then they're like, well, maybe not, but, um, I mean, if, if if Maurice does come back to wrestling, I'd be okay with that, too. I think she'd, she'd be really good for the division over there, who realistically really does need another person or two, for sure. I agree there. I just, I wonder if she's gotten into that mindset of wanting to do that again because i remember mm -hmm. when she first came back she said that's one thing like she really didn't want to do right she was there more for Miz. so and in maybe as time's gone on she sees the division's gotten much better she might think about it more but who you know well we'd have to see if they actually split them up first or not right so we get uh we get the other hyped match. No, well, pun intended, I guess, because the hype pros are basically in a number one contenders match for themselves if they beat the champions here, which they do not do. As uh, the Usos win after Ryder misses the uh, Broski boot right before they come back from commercial, and the Usos win with the splash. So, uh, a good use of the commercial, picture in picture. It's just really weird that you can only use it for certain commercials, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is uh, the match you pick to use it for. And I, I have Sling TV, so you don't get picture in picture. So, they, they cut to commercial, they come back, and suddenly Lusos win. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so... Uh, that that was a bit odd for me. That's but... weird. It doesn't just go onto your screen. No. Huh? View just does it like if I was watching it on TV. It just goes into the other, like just shows the commercial and then I see the the match. Still, that's that's weird. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it was, so this is a fine match for the Usos to win and. I don't know. Did you uh, did you enjoy this? I thought it was fine for what it was, right? I mean, the high pros, you know, they're not technical wizards of the sort, but I think the crowd has really latched on to Mojo and and Ryder's absence, which is nothing but good stuff if they want to keep this team together because the crowd has never stopped loving Zack Ryder, um, even though maybe the heat for it's gone down some. But I um, I kind of hope they stay together. I know people think there's a heel turn coming, but uh, them sort of o overcoming everything and challenging for the titles later on. Like, I mean, there's a lot of face tag teams they're paying attention to right now, too, so maybe they both turn. I don't know. Um, but it seems to sort of go against what both of those characters have become, turning them heel. So, uh, like I said, I hope the Hypros stay together. I'm fine with this. The Usos get another strong win, uh, which they kind of needed after the crappy countout finish. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I didn't hate this at all. I think you sort of have, need to wait a little bit. You got Enzo and Cass just turned. You, do you really need another one going on in the in the other roster? I mean, you could technically, right? They they serve different masters, in that they're they're two different shows. If you wanted to, I think Ryder could pull it off. Mm -hmm. If uh, they really want to, I think obviously I think Mojo would be the wrong choice if they decide to go with him turning because his gimmick is really made to be a face and to, to work in that role and he really needs to go a bit higher up before you decide to get rid of that 
I think. I think there's still mileage there, so... Mm-hmm. But I agree with you that the tag team division needs those tag teams right now, and let's let's keep them together. Yeah, let's let's do that for sure. Don't need to cripple that division <laughs> any more than it already is. Mm-hmm. New Day basically books themselves in a rematch for Battleground, which uh, technically, then you know, Usos only won by countout, so I don't really have too much of a problem with this. I mean. Yes, the High Bros just lost a match where they were supposed to be earning a title shot, but it's not like the Usos definitively beat them. So, and technically, Biggie won a singles match last week. Mm-hmm. So, even though that's not the same, but I don't know. I, I I know all we get out of this is that we're they don't announce it here. They announce it later that there's a rap battle that's going to happen between. The Usos and New Day. <laughs> I know it's going to be silly, and I'm looking forward to it, kind of, as much as it pains me to say it, but I enjoyed their little segment here, too. Like, it was Kofi busting out anything that Moody and Booty rhyme. Just, it made me laugh harder <laughs> than I probably should have. Oh, they're so good at, at that. Just, like, when you think that the segment's just... All right, whatever. Then one of them pumps up with some ridiculous line, and you're like, "I'm right back in here." It's they're just as a as a group, New Day. Just they don't kill it every time, but most of the time. And with the Usos, they really work well. Uh, Mm -hmm. It just it's so funny at times the distinction between the Usos the way they are and then New Day and you're like gosh so you know then you see the segment on Raw you're like well I wonder what people think at this point um you know cause if, if you ask certain people they really don't like the way the New Day act you know so then you have the useless coming in acting the way they do which I think is probably the way that they would prefer New Day to act I guess so it's mm-hmm. It's it's weird in that way, but I think I think it works for both the teams, you know. I just yeah. want to see this rap battle have. Yeah, like I said, it's going to be silly. I, I'm I'm looking forward to it, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it kind of sucks that the new day just kind of barging in to to take over a division, but you can't blame WWE at all for doing this. They know New Day works. They know the Usos work. This is just an easy thing to do while you. Have everybody else sort of in the background building up, which which they've done a decent job with a couple of these teams so far. Yeah, uh, one of them we'll talk about in a little bit. Just I feel like after talking smack, now you have to have Daniel Bryan out there. Oh, being, how being magical the was his rap? Man. Oh my god, they know he don't mean to eat meat, so they made him some tofu. Uh, Daniel Bryan's a rap god, guys. <laughs> John Cena, eat your heart out. Move over, Eminem. There's a new white boy on the block. <laughs> you need to have the uh, potential brothers-in-law rap battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could see, I could see them so doing that on like kind of some kind of dumb segment on like Total Divas or. Like talking smack, Cena just comes in and goes, "Oh, I, I saw you rapping a mm-hmm. couple weeks ago. You know, let's do this right now. Let's <laughs> just uh, it would be a classic." Uh, speaking of John Cena coming back next week, so you know, we'll see how this goes for him because the guy that everybody expects for him to meet up against is the current WWE Champion, Jinder Mahal, who his opponent for Battleground, Randy Orton, interrupts Aiden English singing, which is already a big bummer. Mm -hmm. I don't know which was worse. You interrupted the Drifter on Raw, and then you interrupt Aiden English on SmackDown. It's like, God, nobody is just allowed to have a voice anymore. What is this? Yeah, I mean, we can't get attached to people because they're too busy getting the crap kicked out of them by Upper Carters, uh, which might bite them in the ass later on. (laughs) 
at least he didn't really we didn't get to see him beat up uh well he didn't beat up english too much but i mean the rko is enough to to beat up about like five men so right yeah <laughs> so it basically orton says that he uh deserves this title match um and that he's going to beat up Mahal everywhere he possibly can until he gets it. So Shane McMahon comes out uh, and says that, look, uh, we're not doing this. But uh, the only way you're going to get the match is if the champion gets to pick his stipulation. And then, of course, Jinder Mahal picks the Punjabi prison match. Because why not? Uh, you know, I, I learned something tonight, and that is that the great Kali is a hero to one person, and that is Jinder Mahal. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard those words uttered ever in life. Uh, so, you know, congratulations to Kali, somebody does like you out there. Uh, <laughs> well, we didn't know until last week that he had a protege. Right. That That's going to be in the... The women's classic, so we keep learning all these things about Kali every week. Uh, you know, the first match wasn't exactly something that I felt like we needed to do again, honestly. And granted, it was Batista and Kali, right? I mean, that was only right. going to be so good. So, you know, Jinder and Randy are, are much more able workers, uh, so maybe we'll get something better out of this. I just, I don't have a lot of high hopes for this. It is a cool visual, though. Like seeing all that around the ring is is, is really neat. Um, so I'm o- okay with it from that kind of perspective because WWE is very much about spectacle, and that is what this match is. So I uh, I kind of hope Jinder wins still, though, right? I mean, we know Cena is going to win that championship from him, right? I mean, yeah, it, it's going to happen. We just it's all the waiting game. But I mean, making Jinder into something still should be a priority. And and I don't know if they've necessarily made him somebody that's going to stick around long term as far as popularity goes and wanting to boo him and all this stuff. But, um, you know, he keeps beating Orton. It's got to do something for you, right? Yeah, I think it does. I I just feel like while you could – look, you can always do the Randy Orton Cena feud and it's going to do something for somebody. Mm-hmm. But I feel like you're wasting that opportunity not to have gender going against the real American hero, John Cena. And the Punjabi prison match, as much as it's very much like a it's very much like a cage still, as much as you try to keep people out, you still have the Singh brothers get involved and all this other stuff, have crazy stuff happen and somehow Mahal still wins. I, I wouldn't be surprised if for a third time in a row he wins because the Singh brothers distract Randy Orton and this time there's nothing that Orton can do or perhaps they just have him outright finally beat him. I don't know. But honestly, Randy Orton's at the point where it doesn't matter if mm-hmm. he loses like that. It's not going to really hurt him. But, you know, WWE, the heels cannot be straight up just winning – you have to find some dumb way to win. Right. Which sucks. But that, that's that's the way they run things, honestly. You have uh, Owens, uh, Kevin Owens, I should say, that uh, he has uh, AJ Styles, of course, still wants a piece of him for the U.S. title. And, you know, uh, Styles complains about the open challenge with Owens. Uh, Owens uh, says that he's already beaten him. What's the point? And then we get Daniel Bryan saying, look, it's Independence Day. Who doesn't love a battle royal? Let's just have an Independence Day battle royal. Whoever wins faces you at Battleground. I'm fine with that. I mean, it's a 
it's July 4th. I mean, not everybody's going to be watching. Why not? I'm okay with this. I like Battle Royals. You might be able to get to see a lot of the talent you don't get to always see. Maybe get some opportunities uh, before you have the main eventers take the center stage. The real headline for Kevin Owens tonight was just how absolutely wonderful he was on Talking Smack. Once again, uh, I was I was near tears in how hard I was laughing at him and Daniel Bryan's interactions and just how much he was bagging on Renee. Like, I just... 10 out of 10, Kevin Owens. You're, you're the best. Yeah, he was... He signs the paper and just throws all the papers everywhere. It's like, hey, I needed to use that. And Him stealing uh, her water was just priceless. <laughs> and then getting the water on the phone, and she, <laughs> she's like, "You got these new phones, Eva. You're gonna find a way to get it on your on your account." It's like I don't know how you're gonna do that, but all right. Just uh, and Brian putting it to him as well. Uh, Owens is like, "Well, now you're back on the show. It used to just be." Shane and Renee, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, what a way to bury Shane uh, being on the... I mean, yeah, he really... The the stark contrast between Brian being on the show and Shane being on the show is, is night and day. It's just, mm-hmm. Shane is just not... He's not Mr. Personality. So... You know, and Brian, what's so funny is, like, Brian used to not be that way, and then, like, he's just, he just doesn't care. Mm-hmm. So he just does whatever, and it's it's just so great. Yeah, I mean, you get to see him be goofy and, and toe that line, because it feels like things are a little bit less strict on the network. So um, I think he really just takes that opportunity to sort of cut loose, and... Uh, I don't think you really get a better you know, sighting of that than when Kevin Owens tells Renee that she interrupts him a lot, and Daniel Bryan says, you know what, Renee, you do do that a lot. You should work on that. <laughs> oh, great. It was so great. I, it, uh, if you haven't watched Talking Smack this week, folks, go do it. It was it was wonderful. Yes, you should. Uh, not only for the... I mean, Kevin Owens is a highlight, but I mean, Carmelo did pretty well. Mm-hmm. On there, and then you get also get the awesome moments with Brian and the Usos, so it's it's a whole jam packed episode. I uh, these Nakamura may face Baron Corbin. They tease it. That's kind of all we get from Nakamura on this show. And last but not least, we have to talk about the Fashion Vice segment oh. with <laughs> the Ascension <laughs> there. Okay, so we they go into this. They're doing an interrogation of the Ascension. <laughs> so they go in this room, which it's like one of those like darkly lit rooms with a, a round table. And Fandango has Eddie money tickets. <laughs> <laughs> like, like of all the artists, you can come out with Eddie money. Uh, at least it keeps with the eighties theme, and. <laughs> like Connor actually wanted the tickets. It's, he's kind of like breaking that stone walled care. And they have like makeup on to make it look like their lips are like sewn shut or whatever, which I think sort of adds to this as well. Mm-hmm. And so then Tyler Breeze comes in and gives them iced tea and a cheese platter. <laughs> and they're like, wait, we both played good cop during this thing. <laughs> what? And and then they come back and their office is screwed up again. And uh, then you see Ascension just eating the cheese plate and taking the tickets anyway. <laughs> it's uh, seeing two men dressed in goth eating cheese off a plate. Just there's something to that. Uh, this this might be my new favorite segment with the fashion police. Like everything <laughs> is on point here. Like the Ascension play along. Uh, from everything to when they're offered the Eddie Money tickets. Uh, I believe Connor's the big man who goes, you know what, we don't need those because we only listen to grunge thrash metal. <laughs> <laughs> and then when Fandango tells Tyler Breeze that I think we both played good cop, Tyler Breeze goes, no, no, wait, man, we were great cops. 
Uh, the Ascension probably showed more personality just in this segment than they have the entire time they've been on the main roster. So. I, I, it was just night and day, and this was just so – it was so great. I, I mean, they have a picture of Rick Martell on the table, too, under yeah. it that says role model. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's the, like uh, – it's just the subtle things that they do, too. It's, it's so good. Seriously, WWE give these guys 15 minutes on the network in a oh. show. It would be great. Give them, yeah, just just keep making these forever. Keep making these forever. They're just so good. You weren't on last week, but how did you like the uh, reappearance of the American Alpha? Um... You know, it was nice to see them, right? And Chad Gable showing up to do the the challenge and everything, where he temporarily moved uh, for one day, which was nice of him. And um, you know, I mean, it was just there to sort of make Kevin Owens look good, but it's still nice to see them now. If we can only get Ty Dillinger back on TV, yeah. Oh, well, you know, if he does commercials for Sonic, that's where you get him, <laughs> right? That's like, not good enough. <laughs> at least we know he gave both the shakes a 10. That's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. That's all we needed for that. Uh, but, yeah, so, you know, that's all for SmackDown. But uh, what do you think number-wise for the show? Uh, you know, I really enjoyed this show top to bottom, honestly. Uh, there's there's a lot of good comedy. There's some good wrestling. I think they, they did right by the women's division, which is really the focus this week, much like it was on Raw. Uh, I think I like this just as much as I enjoyed Raw, too, so I'm going to give it a 7. That's where I was going here, was a 7. I think just you have the... You don't have anything, like, outstanding (laughs) wrestling-wise, right? But Mm -hmm. everything moves something along. The Usos get their stuff moved on, and they do it more on Talking Smack. You know, Naomi establishes herself where she's at in the pecking order. Carmelo wins again and looks great this time, really being the heel. And then Baron Corbin, uh, I guess, finally beats Sami Zayn this time. So hopefully that feud is is over, but we'll, we'll see. It's, I, I wouldn't ima- I'd imagine that Nakamura is not being interviewed for no reason. Uh, yeah, just there's every there wasn't a wasted segment on the show, and I appreciate that always. So seven out of ten, a good episode of SmackDown that of course moves along a little bit faster pace than Rock of the two hours. So right. there you go. So until uh, we are here next week talking about more SmackDown, you know, make sure you check out of course the. W2 Network for all of our other podcasts. Uh, of course, you can also just subscribe to Wrestling to the Max wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it on W2Net.com or 41mania.com uh, where you can hear uh, Paul, Gary, and special guest Terry Broadhurst doing Raw. And we'll also be doing our 205 Live review here in just a little bit. And we'll get the uh, W2 Part 1s and 2s in there. ROH uh, Best in the World review and everything else. So you want to make sure you listen to us this week and uh, enjoy your week for that matter. And we'll see you here later. Have a good one, guys. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.